Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be finishing off Omron MX2 Drive where we're going to be setting our drive today in remote control checking out how to control the speed with two buttons and also we're going to be checking out how to get multi-frequency setup going I've been having a lot of fun with this drive, it definitely packed with a load of load of stuff in there that would satisfy I believe everybody's needs for all sorts of different automations. So if you missed the last video, the last couple of videos where we checked that video with the uh, local control with commissioning and the uh, second video we did the 2-3-Y control, do check out the description below there you can find uh, all the videos in there and also all the manuals and everything else that I believe would benefit you in a possible way will be in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Here we are, so our station is wired in and the station we're going to be using first today is going to look like that. We're going to be a forward run, for a reverse run we're going to have two buttons, speed up and speed down. We'll be able to control it that, that way. So uh, there's a couple of things we need to change and obviously that is going to be our inputs that we need to change around and also the actual the frequency source where we need to change as well and the frequency source we need to change to a uh, a01 we need to change that to 02 called operator f001 so basically that will be storing a um, information in uh, i mean frequency in a f001 so uh yeah so a1 make sure that is on two for this operation and then we need to change obviously that we need the, the inputs to be able to uh, for it for it to understand what we are uh, the what we are trying to do and then it needs to know which buttons would be sending it in so to do that we are uh, changing the fourth and the fifth input fourth to be going up and fifth to be going down so again in a C group and, and that was going to be a C4. As you can see, so I set that one to 27. Let me just open up the page to show you what that is. As you see in the... Um, here we go. So uh, 27, up acceleration, and 28 will be down uh, deceleration. So obviously, yes, yeah, so uh, that one, uh, C4 on uh, up, and C5, 28, and down. So, uh, and you still have a uh, so six and seven left if you want to have a jog or, or, or anything else uh, like a trip preset and things like that. You still have uh, that option there. So, let me show you the actual wiring. So, uh, when it comes down to wiring, we again, we have a, um, a P24 coming to a normally closed contact, going through normally closed contact. And as you can see down there, we have wire going back. Uh, uh, to the terminal 3. Remember, if you haven't watched the last video, we have inverted the terminal 3 to be a normally closed uh, contact in there. So yeah, so it's able to, uh, uh, it needs for, for it not to trip, it needs to have power at the terminal 3. So uh, then it also distributes the power to all the switches. Terminal 1, run forward, terminal 2, run reverse, terminal 4 going up and terminal 5 going down. So that's pretty much how uh, the wiring would go. That's where pretty much what it comes down there. We do not use the uh, potentiometer, no potentiometer we are able to use because it will not be reading any values. And there's one more uh, parameter before we uh, uh, crack on and showing you the below demonstration. And that one is a C0101. It's basically a parameter where you need to set if you want the, um, uh, the frequency being kept after the power down and the power up. If by any chance you want a uh, frequency to stay and not go anywhere, so uh, do change that to C101. But I'm going to show that in a minute. So let me put on the cover and I'll show you how that works. All right, go. So the cover is on. So there we go. That's what we're going to look like. And before we crack on with the with the, with the testing and things like that, uh, that C101 is actually not doing what I thought it was going to be doing. So I'm not really sure what it does. So we ain't going to touch it. So uh, regarding speed up and down, as you can see down here, if it, usually you would be on a screen like this. Where's that? Oh, overrun again. 
And it's pretty like this. So you can you can't really know what speed it's gonna be. So let's start it up. So you so, see so if you if you start it up, as you can see it runs at a 28, and you can see the speed down there. So and then you can uh, change the speed. We're gonna get to the sensitivity in a minute. If if you let's 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 shut it down. Yeah. If you want to know what speed it is, you can actually go and do uh, check that out in F001. In F001, you can actually see what speed it's going to be. And plus, you are able to adjust it to whatever you want before you uh, start. You can't see that in a B001 and uh, in, uh, in monitoring, uh, but you can see that in a, in a F001. So uh, this is a short to let that out as well. So if you want to do that, so when it comes down to regarding the, the up and down speeds, as you can see, my sensitivity of speeds are really high. So you just barely touch it, and it just it runs around, and that's very much depending on your acceleration. And that we can change in F02. So we're going to change that one, let's say, to 10. I'll do. And this, oh, no, that one. Deceleration as well to two, not to two to ten. So and that very much that's eleven. Uh, that will very much. Let's go back down to one. Will uh, impact the sensitivity of your button. So now look at the buttons. So now you're holding it, and it's going a lot lot slower. See, it's pretty much reflecting the actual acceleration deceleration times on the buttons. So let's power it on. As you can see, it starts up as well, quite slow. And here we go up. And then same way, it's gonna come down in the same deceleration speed. So that's what pretty much impacts your... Uh, and then we try to put it all the way around, and then it's gonna stop, and it's gonna go the opposite way. So there you go, and so on. And then, obviously, when you click the e-stop, it puts it in a... Uh, um, uh, trip mode and then you reset it and be, be aware that once you reset it it will start to try to go again and plus because you have still a several uh, couple of uh, inputs in the left over you can put that on a three wire control if you wish to as well so all these options still are there you can still play a play a mix and match and things like that so haven't done that I hope that makes sense and uh, you're well on your way so next Let's crack, uh, let's crack on and check out well, how the multi-frequency setup is done. Here we are, so our multi-frequency station is in, so let's have a look what it looks like. We will have a run signal, speed 1, speed 2, speed 3. Of course these speeds is going to be, because we are going to talk to that in a minute, we, we work like a bit selection system. But every speed to work, uh, you will need run signal. So no matter what you do, you always have to put run signal. And run signal is basically you can have run forwards, you can have reverse. If you can see down here, the terminal one and terminal two will be both run uh, run forward, and run reverse. You can you can swap them around. You can have a, uh, the you can have a two a two wire system if you want to go. You want to have a three wire control. There is there is so many options you can go with because uh, as you can see. I'm run uh, this uh, specific MX drive has given us a uh, spoiling us for choice of inputs. So uh, when it comes down to wiring, here we are. So uh, again, we got a P24 coming to our normally closed uh, signal and going through normally closed uh, uh, signal signal uh, contact. And two, as you can see, the terminal two going back to terminal three, as we have been doing in previous videos. This is our trip wire, and then it sends the uh, power to all the Normally uh, open contacts. First one, we, this one is going to run signal, which is terminal one. Then we're going to have a, a terminal. Uh, what's that? Uh, four, five, and a six. Those are the those are the terminals we have used to, to select our speeds. So when it comes down to speeds, let me run through you, you through some of the options uh, Omron has done. And boy oh boy, they have given us an option. There is a lot you can do because again, this drive is packed with everything you possibly ever need. So there's a page, I'm not sure. So Omron gives us two options. You can do your option by default, it is on a zero zero. So basically this option is here. As you can see, it's bit selection. So uh, because we're using the first uh, three speeds, which is which I'll show you in a minute where to set up in the system, we are using this, this, and this section in here. As you can see, any of the ones, you can see the selection of the ones, will be reflected to a speed. 
So you can see in there, any of the ones, so let's say speed five, will be a, uh, 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 terminal uh, three and one uh, coming on. So basically in our case, it's gonna be terminal four and a six, or the switches will be speed one and speed three will achieve that speed. So, and all the speeds you can see down here, all the uh, frequencies, you can edit all in uh, starting from A20 onwards. Or you can have an option 19, which is equals to one. This is uh, A019, two equals to one. And you can have this option. I've never seen this one the option in the drives. So you can have all seven inputs to be designated to some form of speed. And those speeds can be selected as well, as you can see, seven in there. If you want like, like uh, terminal one to be speed one, terminal two to be two, you can have that option. That is right there. We are gonna be going for this one because I'm gonna show you how that more or less uh, works with bits. But yeah, uh, the second option, I've never seen it before. So that is pretty cool. So again, you need to select a, um, a do your terminals. So make sure your terminals have been a, uh, selected which ones you are going to be using for your selections. So uh, as you can see in here, if you know there, multi speed. So uh, CF1, CF2, CF3. Remember, I just showed you that. And just add these numbers into whatever inputs you are going to be using. I'm using four, five, and six. So that's pretty much how the multi frequency uh, setup will work. Again, spoiled for choice. There is some uh, other options there as well, but for the basic system. That's pretty much all we're going to need. So let me put the cover on and I'll start to sort of give you a sort of a good run through how that actually works in real life. There we are. So the cover is on. As, as this station stands at the moment, we can have a maximum of seven speeds. The first one will be our run speed, which can be done by potentiometer down here. You can add potentiometer if you wish to and whatever the run signal you put it on. It will uh, try to is looking for a frequency to be as one, uh, whatever is part of the uh, potential the standard frequency. You can put that if you want this to be some form of speed for you. You can put the minimum frequency on this one and we'll run that. So once you put, as you can see in here, if you put uh, switches on, nothing shows. There was one thing I want to check. Can I see that in F? And. Here we go, James Jamie, you can see that in F001, what speed is going to be. So this is going to be six, this is going to be 11, this is going to be 21. That's uh, whatever that selection was down there, the, the, these two, uh, that's 40, so here we go, that's a seven speed. So I remember how I did that. So speed one, speed two, speed three, speed four, five, <coughs> and six. And remember, our seventh is our run. So uh, as soon as we do that, as you can see down there, uh, we have still very slow uh, uh, accelerations, acceleration system down there. As you can see, I'm hoping that you are getting the gist. It's all about bit selection and combination. It's like a child's game, pretty much. There we go, so, and then you go for that one. And here we go, hopefully, and then obviously we are back and trip the drive out if you wish to. Uh, remove the signal, remove that, reset, and we are pretty much ready to go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this really uh, gives you a seventh. If you add another one, you can use the seventh down here and you can have 15 speeds if you want. And if you are again, the other option, we can have a uh, seven speeds just from one to seven. And you can set up all different wire controls if you wish to. Ball for choice, ladies and gentlemen. Right? MX2 has definitely got is packed with uh, a lot of choice and a lot of everything that you can do, possibly come up with some, I don't know, great ideas and things like that. So that, ladies and gentlemen, will cover the MX2. Uh, we will definitely, definitely in the future look into the JX2 and definitely keen to look uh, into. Uh, I believe that one's is lower grade. Don't quote me on it. So once I get one, I'll definitely gonna get put that under a review on our channel. So on that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. And hopefully it gets you where you want to get and gives you a good understanding how this drive more or less works. And uh, so, yeah, so if you like it, uh, definitely smash that like and uh, comment below, subscribe. And uh, any questions, do uh, type them up in the description below and I'll answer them as soon and as accurate as I can. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.